Yellowstone supervolcano activity. There's monitoring taking place twice a day for eruption indicators. This is done by NASA satellite. Now, just a few details of this. Look at this mountain of ash. Mountain of ash just by one recent eruption and mountain ranges full of ash from the Yellowstone eruption. The Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, the Lava Creek Tuff, Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, you can see mountain ranges full of this. You can imagine what took place, how much of the United States was covered in ash because of this. Now, the magma comes from a mantle plume coming from Baja, California. This is the same that mantle plume that supplies western, the west coast of California, the high threat volcanoes of California, and the eastern branch goes through Utah into Yellowstone and goes then west, directly west 90 degrees into the Idaho volcanoes. And we've recently seen Idaho earthquakes just the, the other day, 3.5, 4.4. And we're going to see the shake map of that that shook not only Yellowstone, but I would venture to say shook the whole of the west coast. And we'll see those indicators soon. But this is what it looks like they have the daily tracking of the movements of Yellowstone. Now, Yellowstone is a supervolcano, and it's being monitored twice daily through satellite scanning any thermal changes, the temperature changes in the park. It helps to warn the scientists of potential future eruptions. The caldera dubbed a supervolcano because of its capability to inflict devastation on a global scale in the event of a super eruption. The last biggest events, Huckleberry Ridge eruption 2.1 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption about 640,000 years ago. And this is the ash fall that we saw in the pictures before. Located between the states of Wyoming, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. These areas are constantly monitored by USGS, the US Geological Survey, because they want to find signs that uh, history could repeat itself in uh, some kind of an eruption. Now, they have pulled in help from NASA as well. Preventing volcanoes from erupting is beyond human control. They will erupt. We, there's nothing we can do to change that. But scientists can monitor them for signs that one could be on the way in order uh, with the heat uh, from the ground level in order, of course, to if the, um, they believe the eruption could be big enough to cause an evacuation. Now, just we did in Mount St. Helens eruption in 1981. USGS scientist Greg Vaughn explained that the National Park Service, the NPS, monitors these features and how they change. He says the NPS needs to understand how this ever-changing thermal activity affects visitors' safety and park infrastructure. For example, if they are going to build a new road, thermal anomalies often precede eruptions, but it's usually after the fact that we realize this, he said. While the park has placed sensors at some locations, it's not possible to monitor on foot more than the 10,000 geothermal features spread over about 3,500 square miles of the park. Now, this is 10,000 geothermal features throughout Yellowstone Supervolcano, the park area. It has over 60% of the Earth's geysers are found right here at Yellowstone. Dr. Vaughn said, for a lot of volcanoes, a satellite image may be the first indication of an upcoming eruption. In 2013, Dr. Vaughn thought that Yellowstone would make a good case study for detecting thermal precursors of an eruption. Yellowstone's high elevation, ranging from 5,000 to 11,000 feet, gives its thermal features a cool background, especially at night when the sun is not warming the Earth's surface. The moderate resolution images Spectro radiometer or MODIS instrument attached to both the Terra and Aqua satellites past Earth twice a day. And this high frequency of data is ideal for monitoring larger features, but not for the small ones like the geysers. The Advanced Baseborne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer, or ASTER for short, which is also on board the Terra satellite, can produce thermal images at 90 meter pixels. But Aster does not acquire daily, constantly, only on request. The data does not uh, uh, come to the scientists except upon when they request it. Dr. Vaughn used a mixture of both satellites to measure the background temperature of the Yellowstone area. 
and it gave him data on normal surface temperatures in the area over the last 10 years to compare with more recent ground instruments and airborne records. The heat data confirmed that Yellowstone's volcano remains largely unchanged. Dr. Vaughn said in July that over the years we've been looking, there has not been any real change. There are variations on a smaller scale, but for the park as a whole, no detectable thermal changes, he said. The question is really only answerable over a longer, large time scale. Aster has been useful for assessing and updating maps of specific thermal areas in the park. We found hot areas with Aster that were not on the thermal area maps, and the study provides a framework for monitoring changes in these subtle features, which might someday be automated to alert scientists of any major changes here. And this is by Callum Hort on Express UK. Now let's go take a look at what's happening lately, taking a look at the map and the shake maps of the earthquakes in the area. Okay, here we are at Sizemo Berkeley, and this is just southwest of Yellowstone Lake. This is, of course, over the Caldera area. This is Yellowstone Lake. Look at all these earthquakes that we've had the past few days. The blue is the past day today. And this is, okay, this is Yellowstone Caldera. All of this is the Yellowstone Caldera area. This is Hebgen Lake and Yellowstone Lake. And uh, let's take a look at what's going on here in the area next to it. Idaho, the 4.4, and this is today's 3.2. And if we pull out, we'll see what's going on here. Okay. This is um, Long Valley Caldera and the Mina earthquakes. This is basically all Long Valley Caldera, which is another supervolcano. The high, very high threat volcano of California. And this is the Baja California area that we saw that mantle plume, the magma coming in, going this way, this way, this way, up Utah, which has nine volcanoes south of Salt Lake and into Yellowstone, the supervolcano, and then turning, the, the mantle plume turns to the, towards the west, and uh, this is what we saw uh, very uh, close to the surface of the ground surface in Idaho. And uh, basically, it's like almost halfway between the west coast and Yellowstone. And um, these are the earthquakes, the, the blue of the past day, the red of the past hour. Now, they say that the reason that we have the mantle plume being pushed this way is because of the Farallon plate, the ancient Pacific plate uh, under, going under, uh, subsiding under the North American plate and pushing that, mant that magma into this area. And this is a fault line right here. Okay, so uh, let's go to our shake map. This is the shake map of the 4.4 uh, Idaho earthquake. And you can see that USGS just stops the block right there. You can see the intensity of the shaking. This is Yellowstone Lake, that um, horseshoe shape right there. Now let's go and you can see a little bit more. Okay. This is Yellowstone Lake. And this is Hebgen Lake, that Z right there. So this is all, all of this, you can even see almost the outline. All of this is the caldera. All of this is the caldera, Yellowstone caldera. And you can see that obviously this shaking has shaken Yellowstone. Uh, would it cause earthquakes in Yellowstone? Look, okay, the earthquakes are not that big, God forbid if they were bigger, but um, if you extend the shake map intensity, obviously it has shaken Yellowstone, obviously it has shaken Salt Lake City, Utah, and it has shaken a lot of these areas as well. Let's go back to see what's going on there. Okay, what can I tell you? Uh, it's a big area that has been shaken by a 4.4 earthquake. Uh, if we take off the uh, shaking, the shaking, so you can see what's there. You can see what's there. You, I want you to see the lava field. Okay, look at that. Okay, that's lava. And all this is lava fields here in, in Idaho, and you also have uh, volcano, volcanic fields south of Utah, around this area right here. Uh, you also have another eight or nine volcanoes here in this area, the Idaho volcanoes, and you, of course, uh, Nevada, sorry, uh, east of Long Valley Caldera. In Mina, Nevada, you have all those volcanoes, rather eight or nine volcanoes, if not ten or more. 
around this area, where is it? Sorry, this area, that's Mono Lake, this area here. Okay, right there. That's Mono Lake of the, that's Mina Nevada. All this is volcanic fields as well. That's the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. Uh, I think it's about, what is it, about 600 miles or so from uh, Yellowstone. That's the, um, okay, that's the measure right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight. Okay. Um, geological wise, because of the fact that they're super volcanoes, I mean, they're pretty close to each other. Um, not that they're directly, their magma bodies are not directly uh, in touch with each other, but we did see, we saw the mantle plume was from Baja. It's a Y-shaped going this way, two branches here, and the other branch going this way. Okay, so all of you there, please be, be very careful. This is what's happening. Thank goodness they have the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which was set up actually in the year 2000 after a BBC production of Yellowstone Supervolcano, and the U.S. government said, oh, it is a very important uh, volcano, so let's have a a special observatory there, and they do have a, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. After that, BBC production. <laughs> so, thank goodness we have the observatory there, and we have uh, geologists um, keeping a, a, a very eagle eye on it. So, um, that's what's happening there. They're using the satellite to, call, to uh, uh, figure out what ch uh, changes there are, and also the um, temperature changes as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.